Welcome to my demonstration on the 2D editor I've made, which uses my own 2D engine. So this is the editor. These red lines are just a point of reference. Where they meet in the middle here is just zero zero. You can turn them on and off. So we'll create a new game object. This is all the objects I can create. What it happens is when the editor starts up, it loads all the image files from the textures folder and then creates an instance here for you to be able to use. So if I just had 60 f different images in this folder, it would create 60 different things here. And I just made enough just so that you can see that there's two pages and that the pages actually work. So we'll go ahead and create a we'll create a background here. So this is the editor and all the things that we can edit. So sprite data, every object has a sprite and that's kept in the sprite data here, and then it has entity data which is relevant to the object, so every object has a s position and a name, but this can be added to via its specific class, but everything has all the sprite data, no matter what, so you can move objects around here via the handles obviously, or both handles, and you can also move objects with the numbers themselves, just so that it's completely at zero zero, we'll do that. And then we can also scale things up. And then if we press R, it'll scale the object down based on its texture height and width aspect ratio. Which so currently it's just gonna be the original image size, but later on that'll be that'll make a little bit more sense. So we'll keep that about here. So we'll create a new game object and we have this sprite sheet. This is a Dark Souls sprite sheet I made based on the art done by a guy called Carson Drew it. The way texturing works is that it creates the imaginary square on the texture and you just tell the, where the center of that square is and then how big and how wide it is. How wide it is. So by default it's just going to be the actual image size and then in the center of it. So here the image size is 1024 by 1024 so then that's how big and wide the texture width and height are and then it's just placed in the middle which is 512, 512 but we can change these around so that we can actually select just one specific area of the texture so if we go 256 and then here we make it 256 that'll get a specific area so we'll set this one we'll set this one to uh, 896 So obviously I've looked these numbers up before, prior to doing this so I know because the dimensions are all going to be the same for every sprite, but as long as you know how wide each sprite is and that they're all the same, this will, this will work no matter what you're using. So then we'll make a neato here, as you can see, but if we press R, that'll scale the image based on the new texture height and texture width aspect ratio, so now he looks pretty much, not perfect, but he, he looks pretty good. So we'll put him in just about there, but we can also we can also flip ob sprites up vertically or horizontally. So we'll have him facing that way, and we'll pl uh, we'll duplicate him so we can keep the size and texture height in order, and we'll change the we'll change the texture poles in the X. This one will be 896, and no, we won't be using. That one we'll be using 640. Well, there we go. Seath. We'll be using Seath. Put him over here. Uh, scale him up just a little bit. And then we can duplicate Seath this time. And we'll move this texture position to 640 by 640. That's right. So this is the chest mimic. And we'll scale him down a fair bit. No, not too much. And we'll just put him somewhere in the center ish. Let's have him in the background running crazily. So we'll flip him that way. And now we'll show. Uh, the, there's also parallax layers to this. So if I put. Let's say I put uh, the background at parallax layer. We'll go 500. You can see it gets further away, so this is really, just, the parallax layer is just where where it's positioned in the Z value in the world, but then obviously when I move, the it'll move relative, so the back, background moves slower 
or well, moves in quotation slower than the foreground images that are there. But then if I uh, put this back to zero where it was, and then we can look at the depth, which is where an object is positioned within that same parallax layer value. So it's positioned in the world by a parallax layer, but then within that it's sorts by a depth to see which object is drawn first. So if I put him at 10, excuse that minus 10, then it means he's on the same position as the background, but he's technically behind it in the depth, so that's why he's not being rendered, because he's behind it. So then we'll just bring him back to bring him back to zero. And then we'll let's save this world out. We'll call this my test world. And we'll click save. And then we'll just close that down. And we'll redo, we'll restart the program. So now we'll just load that world back up. That we just saved, my test world. Open that up. And then we have it. Everything's all there. It even saves camera position if, if, you, if that's important. But uh, yeah, all the texture coordinates are saved, so we've got our little world. You can delete objects right here, or you can just hit the delete key, it's all the same. And here is a example world that I've made using all the sprites. Well, not all of them, but it looks a bit prettier than what I had before, it just take a lot longer. So yeah, thanks for watching, that was my 2D editor and 2D engine. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks.